Namaste. Hello, yogis. Welcome to another version of Karma Yoga Center's Alchemical Astrological Report. This report is for the new moon in Virgo. And today there are three things that I want to cover, or three major things. The first has to do with an event that's actually happening today as we film this, which is September 6th. And that is Saturn going direct after a four-month retrograde. The second is the actual new moon in Virgo with the sun opposite Neptune. We'll talk about that. And the third one has to do with a grand fixed cross that's happening between Mars up in Aquarius, Venus in Scorpio, or soon to be in Scorpio, Uranus in Taurus, and the north node of the moon. I'll talk about what that all means in a moment, but let's go back to Saturn, who is now going forward. Saturn has a four-month, or just a little bit longer than a four-month retrograde cycle, where it appears, when you look in the sky over the course of four months, that Saturn is going backwards through the zodiac. Saturn has stopped and stationed today, which is September 6th, at two degrees of Capricorn. Now, when Saturn is retrograde, it has to do with all things related to authority, looking at structure in your life, projects that are trying to go through, karmic things that are happening to you, and that can include karmas from past lives, but let's make it a little more grounded to this life, karmas that are playing out because of choices that you made in this life. The general wisdom in astrology is that when karmas are coming in from past lives, they're repeating in this life and you've made the same choice again. And so really, if you can see it in this life, getting to the root can be helpful in a past life, but it's best to also just be able to see what's happening now. And that is what Saturn's purpose is when it's retrograde. Normally when Saturn is going forward, it's there when you're in positive relationship to Saturn, it's there to help you build structure, to accomplish things, to get your ducks in order, to figure out what's the best path and course to take in life and how to have a good reputation, take responsibility for the things that you need to do. And so when it's turned inward, you're looking in towards yourself to see where you need to look at your structure, how you've put your life together. Are you being responsible for yourself? Are you taking care of your duties? And are you looking at your karmas and possibly past life energies? That's if you're going into some of the deeper layers. And what is the barometer that helps you see all this? It's the emotional body. And the emotional body has to do with the moon. Saturn and the moon are opposite energies, yet they're also complementary. On the zodiac wheel, we have the natural zodiac, Saturn, which lives in the house of Capricorn. Everything I just described about Saturn applies to the astrological sign of Capricorn. Structure, duty, responsibility, karma, dharma, duality. And then for the moon, the moon has to do with your emotional body, your childhood, not necessarily linear structured time, but it's more watery outside of time, outside of space. And that has to do with the airplane flying overhead. That's Saturn checking in with my emotions, seeing how I respond. That has to do with the sign of Cancer. The moon lives in Cancer and that's her home. And so everything you would say about the moon also applies to the sign of Cancer. Emotion, watery, childhood, things from the past, intuition. And so they're opposite of each other on the zodiac wheel, but they're there to balance each other. With all things in astrology, the magic geometry is the pyramid or the trine. In a pyramid or a trine, there's three points. If we have Saturn in the sign of Capricorn here, and the moon and the sign of Cancer here, if we're trying to be one or the other, we get stuck, we get out of balance, we get too much into one type of thinking or one way of being, and we can't see clearly the full circle. The way to integrate is to take both the energy of Capricorn, you need to be responsible, you need to have duty, you need to be your inner adult, and you need to be emotional. You need to sense what's coming up from the soul body. You need to be able to tell what your intuitive uh, nudges are coming from, and you meet them in the middle, and it creates a stable structure of a trine or a triangle. This is the goal of Capricorn and Cancer. They work together, or Saturn and the Moon. And Saturn's ultimate goal is not to um, punish you 
or make you get in trouble or say you're bad just for that sake. It has to do with getting you on the correct path. And so Saturn is the energy that delivers karma, that delivers the results of your actions. So if you take an action here, in science it says there'll be a reaction here. The energy of Saturn is the one that dictates what that reaction will be. Now, we want to take it deeper to the spiritual level. The reaction or the energy is there to try and get you back on your course. When you're off course, you need a karmic correction. You're either doing too much or too little of something. And what helps you to get that sense if you're doing too much or too little of it is your emotions. You get these little nudges of uneasiness, anxiety, maybe sadness or grief or depression about something. And those are indicators or the weather of your soul saying you're out of balance. So Saturn is now going direct. And so this can be like the time of, in Monopoly, pass, go, and collect $200, or it can be a little karmic spanking. It's also a time where things start to happen. We just got through a whole summer of retrograde activity. Seven planets, including Saturn, were retrograde totally by the end of the summer, and we had three eclipses. This is all inward energy. Eclipse is inward. Retrograde is inward. We had Mercury retrograde. We had Mars retrograde, Saturn, Uranus, um, Pluto, Chiron. Can't remember the last one, but you get it. There's seven of them. And so now that we now have Mercury and Saturn in four motion, it's like whatever the restrictor has been on something or what's been holding something back, the obstacle's been lifted, the gate's been open, the window has been pulled up, and energy can now flow. This doesn't always mean necessarily that it's going to be an easy flow. Sometimes someone's been holding back waiting to say something and now the words come out direct. And it just so happens that both Saturn and Mercury, which were retrograde, are trining each other in a harmonious aspect. Saturn is in Capricorn and Mercury just entered into Virgo. And um, Mercury, which is the planet of communication, as I stutter my words, is it very at home in Virgo, it lives in Virgo, it's very precise in Virgo, very directed. It's like becoming the surgeon or the master sculptor when it's in Virgo. Its words are very like the arrow coming through. And so Saturn has now lifted the restrictions, Mercury in communication can flow, and things that probably need to be said, truths that need to be revealed, because Capricorn wants to know the deep truth of things are coming out. This can be a little contentious, can also be revelatory and discovering new things, but ultimately the goal of Saturn and Mercury here is to get everyone back on the path so that each one of you can fulfill your greatest good. This Saturn Direct will be happening all the way through the end of the year, and I think it will be also happening on a global scale. Saturn and the sign of Capricorn rules government, politics, laws, the interaction between countries, and so if there's been a stagnation over the summer or tension or possible bridge building, this is the time where things could happen beneficially or controversial between different countries. So with that backdrop of Saturn, we have the new moon. This is the last new moon of the summer. The new moon always sets the tenor or the energy for the next 28 and a half days or the next month basically. And this new moon sign is in Virgo. Whenever the moon is new, it means it is hanging out directly with the sun. The sun and moon are together, and the sun is behind the moon, so you can't see the moon being uh, reflected back with the sunlight, so it's dark. We have dark skies. When the sun's rising in the morning in the east, the moon's rising with the sun. When the sun's setting in the west at night, the moon's setting with the sun. What does it mean to have the sun and moon together, particularly in the sign of Virgo? Well, Virgo, and let me talk about Virgo in relationship to Pisces here. I was just about to go in there, but the reason I'm bringing in Pisces is because this new moon with the sun and the moon in Virgo are in opposition directly to the planet Neptune in Pisces. So it's those two astrological energies again where one energy is this, the other is the opposite, but ultimately we want to seek the union or the point of the pyramid in between. So let me talk about Virgo and then Pisces energy. Virgo energy has to do with the choices that you make. Virgo wants discernment. Discernment means are you being conscious, aware, and engaging with your choices? Or are you unconsciously going forward and just letting your desire body, your need body, take action? Virgo wants you to reflect and go inward and say, is this the best course of action? Is there a better way to do this? 
what does this do to other people? Virgo also wants to know what's the service of the action. Virgo is service oriented when it's balanced. When it's unbalanced, it can be very egotistical. Another aspect of Virgo is integration. Virgo is one of the signs of the zodiac that has to do with mastering things. The, all the signs that come before Virgo, Aries through Leo, have to do with self-development, being aware of the self, learning what you do and put out in the world, discovering what your emotions are, learning how to communicate. And Virgo says, take all of those and refine them into something that is of use. Not just of, to you, but that's of use to others, that is of service to others, that can help others, that can progress our planet, that can bring love here, that can ground something. Virgo is the sign of the Virgin, the one who is connected to Mother Nature and grounding. But we don't mean virgin in the same way that we use in our modern culture for somebody who's lost their virginity. The more ancient word for the Virgo virgin access has to do with choice. In the ancient times, the virgin was either man or woman, and he, she was the one who was consciously aware of how they chose things, including their sexuality, including their words, including their actions, including their thoughts. And so someone who is a virgin in the ancient terms is a powerful priestess or a priest. And to get to the deeper part of it, what does a priest or a priestess do? They're a healer. They're there to help heal things. They're help, there to help make things integrate and become whole again. And that's where the sign Pisces comes in. Pisces is the whole. It's everything. It's everything and nothing. It's outside of time. It's outside of space. And yet it encompasses it all. It's the great womb. It's where you came from before you were born and where you return to after you die and drop your body. Pisces is ultimate love. Pisces also has to do with service. And Pisces is taking all that energy of the everything and taking it down to Virgo to something specific. And Virgo has to communicate back to Pisces, to spirit, to say, is this integrating to the whole? It's communication back and forth. And so we have the sun and the moon in Virgo. The sun represents your heart energy, who I am. Ah! how you act in the world. The moon has to do with how you feel and what your inner landscape's like. What is your intuition? How do you feel nurtured? How do you want to nurture others? How do you want to nurture Mother Earth? And Neptune in Pisces, the positive way that Neptune can show up, is Neptune is your spiritual path, your spiritual development, your spiritual connection to the all. So you have spirit, God, connection to that oneness and source, and you have service, health, and refinement down here. So this access is asking us, what are you doing with your life? Is it of use? Can you find a way to take all these energies that you've been thinking about over this retrograde season where we've been held up by Saturn, saying, wait, wait, wait. You may be developing an idea, a book, a healing center, a new way of doing accounting that can help yoga centers so that they can do their gift. But whatever it is, it's, uh, it's been on hold perhaps during the summertime. Saturn lets the gates go, and then with the new moon, it's starting a whole new cycle, something that's gonna be put out in the world. And the sun is how you're gonna do it with your heart. And Virgo wants to know, are you doing it right? Have you checked things out? Is this really gonna be the best way to do it? And then the Pisces side says, trust spirit. If you're in alignment, if you've done your Saturn work, then things will flow with the goddess, flow with God, flow with your higher self. The shadow side of this new moon is Pisces and Neptune represent delusion, illusion, being out of your center, escapism, not wanting to fulfill your duties and karmas, not wanting to look at truth, and not wanting to show up on this planet. Virgo says, show up here now, be here now. Neptune and Pisces says, heck no, I'm getting out of here. I'm going out for the weekend. I live for the weekend. I don't want to get my responsibilities and duties. Or I want to go off to the mountains and ignore my responsibilities. Or I want to pretend what truth is being told to me is a lie or an illusion. So be aware of that. And also the other side of Virgo, which is challenging, that could be, is Virgo can be overly critical. It can be overly critical of the self, and it can be overly critical of others. So that's our new moon energy, and it's setting the tenor as we come into fall. And speaking of fall, let me talk about our third aspect, that grand fixed cross. On the new moon, which I don't think I stated the date, which is Sunday, September 9th at 12 p.m. Mountain Time, along with the sun and moon being in Virgo, we also have 
Venus going into Scorpio that same day. And the following day on Monday, September 10th, Mars comes back out of its retrograde motion, which it did last week, and enters into the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius and Scorpio are square each other. And so we have Mars and Venus in a square. Venus is entering the underworld of Scorpio. It's like Persephone's journey. Venus or the feminine is going into the underworld and the underworld has to do with seeing the shadow, seeing the things that have been hidden. What are the lies? What are the untruths? Or what are your fears? Or what are you not being able to come into relationship with that you've been suppressing, depressing, denying? When Mars is in Aquarius, Mars is the masculine energy that wants to go forth and penetrate. And when it goes to Aquarius, Aquarius can be all head, just thinking, just going into the mind, just analyzing and not using the heart. Also with the sign of Aquarius, it can be escapism. It can be dreaming of something far, far away and your masculine side can say, I want to run, I want to get out of here, I want to get away from things. And why? Because your feminine side's in the emotional underworld. It's looking at the shadow side of things. This also can be, though, a positive aspect. Anytime there's a square, the ultimate evolutionary reason for it is to come to a greater solution than before. And so going in there, the sign of Scorpio also has to do with intimacy. It has to do with mastery. It has to do with overcoming forces that are greater than you and being able to integrate with them and move with them and understand them. And one of those greater forces is your soul. What is your soul saying your purpose is this life? It can be scary to go into the soul realm as the Venus energy and to start feeling. Because if you start feeling, the emotions can be strong as they come up. They can be strong because you may feel sadness that you've been off the mark. Or you may feel grief of something you wanted before and it's dying and falling away. Or you just may feel confusion not understanding what's happening right now as your masculine and feminine seem to be pulling in different directions. The other side of this square, because it's a grand square in fixed signs, fixed mean immovable, is Uranus and Taurus. Uranus has to do with sudden changes, lightning energy, innovation, sometimes trauma. Taurus has to do with earth and grounding and finances and money and houses and how you feel about yourself. So you've got Uranus over here, sudden things, opposite Venus, with Mars right here. It can be an energy of transformation too, because Uranus can be sending out sudden transmissions of information from your internal world, from Mother Nature, from your environment around you, from your bank account, that say, we're going this direction now. To add to that cross, at the bottom of the cross is the Moon's North Node. The North Node has to do with the future, what the possibilities are to come, and where the collective wants to evolve towards in highest way. It's in the sign of Leo. Leo is creativity. Leo is standing up and being your power. Leo is expression. And Leo, when it's imbalanced, it's the noble king. It's the one who stands up and is able to serve the others, be present in front of them, yet stay humble and know that you're in that position of power or in that position of grace because you have something to offer the others. That's the reason for your greatness. This whole energy is sitting here with that grand fixed cross with our emotions in the underworld, with Mars and how we want to use our willpower, with sudden changes that might have to do with things with finance, romance, and grounding. And we also have what our future looks like. If you've been doing your work with Saturn, and Saturn is direct, and you're paying attention to this new moon, this new seed, how can I be of service? What can I deliver to the world? And you're using that Neptune energy of integrating it to the whole, of imagining and being ultimate love. This could be a very positive transformational time. So to review what our three major astrological changes are this time, number one, Saturn went direct September 6th after a four-month retrograde. One simple word, it means go forward. Number two, we got our new moon and sun in Virgo opposite of Neptune and Pisces. It's integrating that Neptune Pisces energy, refining something, how am I of service, health and healing, and opposite of how does it go to the whole for ultimate love. And finally, our grand fixed cross, Venus and Scorpio. What are my emotions? How am I going into the underworld for transformation? What do I need to master in my life so that I can fulfill my life's purpose? How do I use my willpower, my Mars to do that? And what's my Uranus my innovation, my genius, or sudden changes that can direct me that way. 
And lastly, the North Node in Leo, what's the direction we all want to go together for healing? Well, that's all for our astrological report today. Katrina will be back in two weeks with the full moon. So good to see you all. Namaste.